Hello everyone, welcome back to Retrotech. Today we are in part two of our dissection of this Panasonic RGB CRT Pro video monitor. Now this again is a BTH1350Y color video monitor from 1996. And today we're gonna discharge it and tear it down. And then I wanna show you some good practices in case you wanted to do a cap kit for this or some other type of repair, but first we're gonna get in here, discharge it, and go through some procedures. All right, so let's get started. The first thing we need to do is discharge the monitor. Now, I've already made sure that obviously it's not plugged in, and it's not been powered up for over a day, so there's, an, there's a chance there's not even any electricity still built up in it, but either way, we're gonna do a discharge and be safe. First thing, let's look at this discharge tool. This is one you've seen in the past, it's just a simple high quality flathead screwdriver with a metal tip and then I've got a extension cable extra scrap piece of copper cable I've twisted that around the end taped it to the metal and then my other end of my copper wire is here that I'll insert on my ground to make a ground loop we're zoomed in here on the corner and I just want you to see, all I'm going to simply do is connect this to this ground loop spot right here and make sure it's in nice there and it's attached. And that's pretty much it. I want to flip this cap up here so I can show you. There's our spot. We're going to try to touch the cable so it will be able to come out. And then the actual metal around, there's a ring that's holding that in place. So it's just good to go ahead and get in there. And I'll hold that up so I can move my hand out of the way. Here's an extreme close look up of that anode cap. See how it's got that metal under there? And when you come in and discharge here, that's what you're trying to touch. It's just touch this. And then there's a ring that's inside there that you're trying to tap to to get rid of all the energy. Let's see, you just push that. That anode will come right out. Now that we're safely discharged, we can get in here and freely work on really anything and we'll be safe not to uh, zap ourselves unless we go over here and somehow electricity can occasionally get built back up in that anode cap. So just stay away from that, uh, but it's most likely harmless. Now we're going to start disassembling this monitor and you can already see maybe there's a lot more cables in this monitor than there might be in a Sony or a different style of monitor. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to leave as much of this intact as possible and still slide this board out without taking and unplugging every board. But another good thing to do right now, and I will do it, is to take pictures of all your connectors so you make sure when you reassemble this monitor, you'll have it set up the way it is now and properly. I'm back in here working and I will take some screws out that need to come out for ground points and I use a fishing tackle or tool uh, separator box right here to separate all my materials while I'm breaking stuff down because they have these nice individual compartments. It helps you remember what each screw goes to and where it goes. Let's get this out of the way. work that neck board back a little bit that'll give us a little bit more space to come in behind here honestly I don't know why I'm even unplugging some of these things or not at least not yet so I'm gonna plug back in these points here so I can worry about that when I get the whole chassis out now I've unplugged all the vital things that I need to to pull this whole board out without unplugging additional things for the moment and the board, as normal, will just slip out completely like that. And then here we have our big entire chassis. If you remember, I said I wanted to switch tubes. And to do that, I'm going to need to disassemble this further. Um, so let's just go ahead and take some of this yoke apart. Now I did loosen my screws already. We need to remember that this tube is taped. OK, 
kind of where those will go if we need to reinstall them. Now we've got some extreme dust built up in here, so it's a good idea for us to clean all that out before we put this back together. Now we're taking a look at our chassis from above, and you can see there's quite a few capacitors. Now when I do a cap job, I want to show you what I'm worried about. I'm worried about these larger capacitors over here, all around this area. Anything on this left side of the board near the flyback most likely will be capacitors that are helping with our deflection. So naturally we're going to change out every large capacitor you see there. Now these smaller capacitors I'm not concerned with unless there's a visual or any kind of other sign that they're failing or leaking. There was none on performance wise so we can assume that they're still all good and the problem capacitors are more likely these larger ones anyway. We'll also go through here and change out these larger capacitors on the chassis. Uh, it looks like these boards don't have a lot of capacitors to change that we would be concerned with. Maybe one of these boards down here I'm sticking my Sharpie on. We'll get some caps changed on it. And again, we're going to clean this board thoroughly. One tip, when I go through and order a cap, I'll go through and I'll take a Sharpie after I've ordered it and I'll put a tick mark or something on top of the capacitor so I know that I've counted it and then when I come back and I get the capacitors every capacitor that I want to change will have a tick mark on it and I can go in and change the capacitor and I'll be able to tell which ones I've changed because the changed ones will not have a mark on it and I'll know that I still need to change the ones with a mark so that's just a quick little tip with a sharpie to help you on a cap kit there you have it, a completely torn down, safely monitor. Again, the 13-inch monitor has the chassis. It's just all combined like this. And the reason I really wanted to do this was in case anybody was in the sales and repair club or wanted to join it, you can see you just take your chassis apart, and all you need to do is take this down to a shipper, have them pack it if you like, so they can safely pack it and ship it to me. It weighs about 10 pounds or so. And then when I get it, I'll receive it in here. We'll do the cap replacement for you. We can clean it. We can make any other minor repairs that might need to be made. But I just wanted to show how easy it is. The most important thing is to document where all your connections are on your cables. Because like this monitor has a lot of connections. Make sure you take plenty of pictures as you're taking it apart. Feel free to even take a Sharpie and make tick marks if that'll help you. Or tag the cables and make sure you get them all in the right spot or you will have trouble getting your monitor to function even after you have a fresh capacitor replacement. Thank you again everyone for watching this video. Also thank you to the patrons. If you have any questions please leave them below or if you'd like to find out more information please follow the Patreon link. I've got a lot of information there about the sales and repair club and thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful day.